Number four, ordinarily God does not show us His will until we are willing to do it. And I'll explain that in a moment. And number five, the will of God is a lot easier and clearer than most of us think. Let's go to the text. Matthew 7, 7. He says, these are, these, this is Jesus talking now. He's in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And he's telling everyone, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So, if... You ask. How do we ask? Well, we ask in several ways. We ask in prayer. We ask those that may be spiritually more mature than we are. We ask our mate. But the point is, Jesus says, ask, and ye shall receive. He wants you to ask. Because asking will keep us humble. We have to humble ourselves to ask. And humble humility is a learning experience. So, you know, if things don't go the way you think they ought to, if you feel like your prayers haven't been answered lately, then let me ask you, have you asked? Now, there's a condition in answer. We have to ask in the right motive. There was a young man in the classroom, he kept muttering, Tokyo, 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 Tokyo. And one of the classmates said, Man, what are you praying about? He said, I'm praying that God will make Tokyo the capital of France. See, it just doesn't work. There's a contingent, there, there, there's a contingency that we have to can comply with when we ask. And that's to ask in the right way and with the right motive. Now, as children growing up, and you that have children, how did you know the will of your parents? How did you know what was expected out of you as a child from your parents? Well, you had a relationship with them, didn't you? And they told you, didn't they? And when you didn't, they told you again, didn't they? And see, when it comes to God's will, we have to have a relationship with Him. We have to talk to Him. We have to get to know Him so that we know what His expectations for us are. James 4, 3 says, when you ask, you don't receive. Why? Because you ask with wrong motives. You ask according to your own pleasures. So, get into here and start reading and finding out what does God expect of me? And then you will find yourself asking for things like wisdom and guidance and leadership. You ask, you begin to ask for all of those things that will draw you closer to Him <coughs> and conform you in more into His image. I have a slide up here where David, the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord and he inquired rather frequently. And in the first five, David asks for guidance and wisdom. Verse six. And in 2 Samuel 21, it says here that, and, okay, David inquired of the Lord. There was a three-year famine in the days of David. Year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. The Lord replied, it is on account of Saul and his bloody house, for he put a death, he put to death the Gibeonites. Now, Saul, or 
David inquired of the Lord, but this is one of this is the one time that God did not answer David, and He didn't answer him because of Saul. See, sometimes you won't get an answer to prayer when you're seeking God's will, not because it's something you did. It could be something that someone else has done. And this is an example of that. Okay, David didn't pay the consequence. All David did was not get an answer from the Lord. It was Saul that paid the consequence because if you go further into that chapter of 2 Samuel, you'll find where Saul inquired of the Lord and the Lord didn't answer him. Because Saul was in disobedience, Saul was in rebellion, and God refused to answer him. And then in the very next verse, uh, verse 6, that's 1 Samuel 28, 6 and 7. And in the seventh verse, Saul sought the counsel of the witch from Endor. She was a sorcerer. See, that's in our, in our culture, that's what we do. Okay, we'll give God a try, and if He doesn't work, then we'll turn to the horrors, folks. H-O-R-R-O-R. -R -R. For the answer. Failing to realize that perhaps God hasn't answered because we're not in a right relationship with Him. Why is it that we don't answer? Well, I think that Sometimes we feel and think we know God's will in advance. And what oftentimes seems to us like a reasonable decision isn't always the will of God. I had a reasonable decision one time, and, uh, and it cost me. Uh, you know, I, I was leading, I was a worship leader, I was leading worship with a guitar, and uh, I decided that I was going to buy this guitar, and so I did. Because uh, I'm buying this guitar because I'm going to glorify God with it. Good, good reason. Well, something in me said something's not right. You, 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 things aren't lining up. And you know what happened? I ran, in, I ran over that guitar with my car. I didn't even make the first payment. I ran over that guitar. I won't go into the details of how I did it. Okay? You wouldn't believe it anyway. But I ran over that guitar, and it was confirmation to me that, yeah, nothing was lining up. Oh, I had a good reason to buy the guitar. And then I went into panic mode. Sunday's coming. I need a guitar. There's church. I have to leave worship. I think I'll run to Finley and to the pawn shop and buy another guitar. And then God spoke through that woman that he gave me. That helped me. And he said, didn't you learn your lesson? Now the flesh wants to say, shut up, Carol. <laughs> but the spirit is saying, well, fortunately, the story has a happy ending. Because I took that to the Lord, and I prayed. I said, Lord, I want to be in your will, and I want everything to be perfect so I can glorify you. And I gave him my request, what I wanted in the guitar. I was specific. I named the name. I named the color wood. I went the whole way. And she was the only one that knew the description that I gave to God. And it was some time after that, a young man came up to me at church. And he said, Brother, he says, God spoke to me and he said, I've got a guitar that belongs to you. And you know, I just kind of like, I didn't even think about my prayer at that point. Oh, fine, nice. He says, I'll bring it next week. He brought it to church the next week, opened the case, and it's like, <laughs> I mean right down to the detail. Didn't cost me a thing. I still have that guitar. Don't play it much. But I 
mean right down to the detail. When we seek God's will in the decisions that we make, He will give us more than we could ever possibly ask for. The third reason why we don't ask is because we fear that God will actually give us an answer that doesn't agree with what we really want to do. Oh God, I don't want to do that. Uh, God, I don't want to go to Nineveh. God, I don't want that car. See, and so, because we fear that He will answer us in a way that we don't agree with, we just don't answer. Ask and you shall receive. And that's why we don't answer. Let me ask you this though. What's the most important decision you could ever make in your life? Anybody know? Give you just a second, and I'll tell you. We'll sleep on you at some point. Follow Christ. Follow Christ. There you go. Your most, the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is whether or not you decide to become a Christian. That's the most important decision you'll make. 35,000 a day that you could ever make. And the second, who do I marry? Who do I marry? I don't know about you, but I didn't have the spiritual foresight to ask God, who should I marry? You know, I got caught up, caught up in the culture. I did the dating scene, and I dated until I bumped into somebody that I thought was worthy of being my wife. Oh, did I just put myself on a pedestal? Sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me rephrase that. Until I bumped into somebody that, that thought I was worthy enough to be with them. Wow, uh, that better? <laughs> I didn't have the spiritual foresight to know and pray. You know, and I've counseled young people that, you know, come to me and they want to get married. And I'll ask them, I'll say, did you pray about that? Well, no, I didn't pray, but, I, you know, I felt uneasy about it, but... I had invested so much in the relationship that I just couldn't back out. Oh. Uh, no, I didn't ask because I assumed because they were a Christian that everything would be alright. But the reality is Christians get divorced too. All the more reason. Why? Ask God. Inquire as David did of God. Well, yes, I did ask. I did have peace about the decision, but I prayed until I did. Well, I already gave you an example of how you can pray yourself into peace. Even the devil will give you peace if you ask him for it. If you really want to do anything and you're determined to do it, you can pray yourself into a state of peace. 